Hi there, welcome back to this video series about French polishing. So where we left it last time is that I was applying a sealing coat on, on the whole of the instrument. So this is what it looks like. I have two very thin coats of shellac on the front and the same everywhere. In the front it was done with a cloth but everywhere else it was done with a brush. So now we are ready to start applying French polish with the rubber and start the building up process. So to be able to do that, the first thing that we need is to have a look at what is the rubber that we're going to be using. And again, like I've said before, and I might repeat this many, many times, this is just one way that you can do this. And you will find that when you look online, there are already a lot of videos out there about French polishing and there are different things that have been suggested. So for me, what works best is to use these uh, cotton threads that you can buy specially for French polishing. This one is from a make called Liveron. I really like it. And uh, what you would do is depending on the size of the rubber that you're going to use, you need to get a much bigger uh, amount of material than you think you're going to be ending with because this is very fluffy it's got a lot of air in it but as we use it it will compact and it will become quite small well not quite small but a lot smaller than what you have here so what i have at the moment here is something in between the size of a tennis ball and a golf ball it's you know something in more or less that sort of dimension and i have a cloth here which what I do is that I put the wall inside and when I make the rubber what I want to do is to start getting the shape that I like which is what I'm going to show you so the first thing that I do is that I compress the wall as much as I can making it into a, you know a sort of roll and then I push it in from one end and start folding this end like that and then I do the same and push it in the other end and start folding it the other way, this way, like that. And then I get it from that side and wrap everything together. So what I have here, you can see that it's not completely round, but obviously everything is very round because it's a brand new rubber and it's going to take a little bit of time before this is going to work really well. But of course you have to start somewhere. So from the very first moment, I try to start getting a point into the rubber. So most of the polishing is gonna be done with the body of the rubber, but there are areas where I will need to be have, having a, a thin point to be able to reach certain areas that otherwise they'll never get any polish in them. And those are the areas where UI will always go because you know, there's a lack of um, French polish in there and it won't look so good. So what I do to start shaping it is that I use, I put the rubber in between my index and middle finger and then I compress with the thumb. And what I will do is that I will try to compress the stuff inside as much as possible. And then I'll get the polish that I'm gonna use which we already described the other day, what uh, it's made of. And um, it looks like it's got a little stuck there. So I'm going to need to find something to, um, to open it up with. So just a little pin will do it. That's it. Okay, so always point your rubber away from your guitar because sooner or later, if you don't do that, sooner or later you're going to get something going into it. And at this point, it won't matter too much, but it'll be really annoying if later on in the process your guitar is looking really good and all of a sudden this goes ping pong and it leaves you a drop there and it will really burn through quickly. By the time you go and clean it, it leaves you a mark. So it's always a good idea to point 
in the other direction, preferably into somebody else's guitar. And uh, basically, because this rubber is brand new, you really want to load this heavily because it's going to take a bit of time to get to the point in which it's going to start offloading rather than keep sucking. Um, and then I'm going to get some alcohol as well, which I've got over here. And I'm going to put quite a bit of alcohol as well. So the beginning is always a little bit frustrating because it takes a little bit of time to get the rubber compacted enough so that it's actually really efficient. And you can see how much stuff I'm putting on this. You can also open the cloth and put it straight into the, into the wall inside. I'm just going to put this out of the way now. But this is so that you can see more or less what we're doing because I'm going to switch to my old rubber in a minute. So this has got some uh, polish in this, in the rubber. And, you know, I'm going to be giving it a little bit of a massage. And, you know, it's already starting to take a little shape. You know, I've got this edge here. This is really useful, having a crease uh, like that. So this is what will end up going into my edges really well. And then also you want to make sure that your rubber is not too wet. So you want to feel that it's leaving a little bit of material, a little bit of product out. You can also get a bit of paper and check it on the paper before you start going into your guitar here. So what I'm going to do is that, as usual, you always want to start, especially in the beginning of um, the polishing, because there's not a lot of French polish on this guitar yet. So even though we have sealed all the surfaces, when it comes to the rosewood, it could pull some of the polish that's already there and also pick up all the pigments as well, which we'll see in the rubber. If the rubber is not clean, then we need to do something about it. But to make sure that the sample is always clean, this is where I'm going to start. So I'm going to put a little bit more polish and at the moment I'm not going to put any alcohol with it and also no oil whatsoever yet. So what I'm going to do is to come in and start spreading the content of my rubber into the, into the top. This is already dry, so I can put a little bit more. And you will hear it when, you know, hear it and feel it when this is ready to receive more polish. Also, something that you probably know already is that when you approach the soundboard or any surface in the, in the guitar, you want to come into it like an aeroplane landing in, an, in a surface and then come out. What you don't want to do is to put your rubber down and start from a stop. So, because again, at this stage, it won't be a big issue. But later on, when the guitar is looking really good, again, it will leave you a mark where the, the polish is melted, the polish in the surface. So you want to start getting familiar with those ways of working because later on, they'll be important. So in here is where this shape comes into place so with that shape in there i'm going to get right next to the fingerboard and the same in here and then i'm going to come back i can also work with circles it sounds a little grindy because there's not much polish into the surface so as we build it up that sound will go and um, and you know that will only happen when there's a little bit more polish onto the surface so now what i'm going to do is that i'm gonna apply quite a bit more uh, polish into here into the soundboard um, just to make sure that i've got enough uh, polish but when the surface starts to get a little sticky and it's not liking too much the, the application of the rubber and you feel that you need to put a little bit of oil to 
start lubricating, then that's when I'm going to stop because I still don't want to use the oil. I want to use the oil soon, but not quite yet. So that it's going to take me, you know, easily five, 10 minutes. So that's what I will be doing exactly in the same way that I just showed you. But also at the same time that I'm polishing the soundboard, I'm also going to polish the head as well. Because what will happen is that our tendency is to polish all the easy things first. And in fact, actually, actually, when you look online, usually what you see is what somebody's done at the back. And it's great, it's lovely, but actually the back is the easiest thing to polish of all, you know. So it's great to look at the back as a, as a guideline, as, an, as, a, as a reference, but I'm very interested on in what it looks like on these areas and next to the fingerboard as well and in the head, because those are the areas that we tend to neglect. And what we need to do is to get into the habit that if we focus on the difficult areas not too much but in the right way then the rest of it will be done by itself practically really so having said that what i do the routine that i have and you need to find your own routine is that every time i'm working on the soundboard before i load any more polish into my rubber because i don't want to have a very loaded rubber i go into the head and i do exactly the same thing the head is a very small surface, it's a very small area, so I don't want to have much polish, otherwise it's going to start running everywhere and it's going to give me problems for later on. But I want to build up the polish in the head as well. Here, this is all rosewood and I can see that there's no rosewood coming out, so that means that we've got a good uh, coat seal in this surface here, so that's really good news. Um, I'm going to do a little bit on this edge as well and this is now starting to feel a bit sticky so it means that we need to go and apply a little bit more polish. So we're going to do that and we're going to be applying a few coats this way. Again it's very difficult to be able to tell you you need to do that 10 times or you need to do that 100 times or only once because each person does this differently and it depends on how much polish you have. There's so many um, elements and factors into it that to be able to give you a specific number, it would be a bit misleading because, you know, I don't want to lie to you. This is something that I can only give you some ideas and some tips, but at the end of the day, you have to do it to be able to learn your own way. Hopefully this is just a guide so that you can you can sort of get a little bit of help to get you started. So I don't want to be here for 15 minutes doing this because otherwise this video is going to be boring and very long, but that's what you need to do. You need to apply a little bit more polish and in the next video I'll show you what it looks like. Now I'm going to do the back. So with the back and sides, actually I do the sides before the back, we're going to be doing exactly the same thing and this is why I'm going to be careful that I'm not picking up any red pigments from from the rosewood so normally i like working with the guitar resting on one edge and you can see here that i've got a mat where i'm working on because if i work on the bench it's a little bit slippery but this mat is not very thick and it doesn't give too much so there's not much wood in contact with this uh, mat on the top and that's good because i don't want to have a big amount of polish coming out or sticking into the, into the bench. So now that I've got the polish into here, I'm gonna start applying it the same into there. And I can see that there's, there's just a bit of dirt, but there's a little bit of red, a little bit of red just here, but I'm not gonna be too concerned with that yet. So I'm going to apply a little bit more polish and I'm going to do the other side. And I'm going to be working on both sides at the same time. And at the moment what I'm doing is that I am working as if I had three strips here. So I go up one side, down the other one, and then up in the middle. And I always come to want to go past the center where the two sides join. So now I'm going to look at this and again, you can see this has got a lot more red into here, so I'm going to clean it before I carry on. So I've got a little bit of cloth here, 
and all I'm going to do is to get a little bit of alcohol into that and I'm going to rub it into it and if I do that then it means that you know all the pigments are left in the in the cotton here rather than putting back all those pigments where I don't need it so now I want to get a good shape so again I'm pressing it with my fingers and my thumb to shape it up and I've got a nice edge along here so I'm going to put some drops but I'm going to put some in the tip because what I want to do is to work on this area but you'll see I will not do a lot so all I'm going to do is to I'm going to bring that in there and like that and then look I've got a lot of red so I'm going to clean it again like that and again just a few drops here again like that so I've done that one and now I'm going to do this one exactly in the same way I push it into there and into here and there and there so I'm not gonna go on and on and on because what that will do is that if I just do a little bit like this I am applying a very thin coat and if I leave it alone I am allowing that coat to dry and then when I come back to it in a few minutes then it'll be dry enough to be able to receive another one and melt it into that one without removing it because what we're doing here is not applying a series of layers what we're doing is applying polish into the surface that is going to melt the existing polish here to make everything just one coat this is not a sequence of layers one on top of the other one and what we're doing is that we're actually melting what's here as we apply new polish so if we go on and put too much all we're doing is removing what we got there and eventually going through into the wood which you don't want to do that so I just put a little bit of that again I've got quite a lot of red in my rubber so I want to clean it up eventually there will be no red coming out but in the early stages you want to be cleaning this as often as you need to and now I'm going to load the rubber again especially the tip because now I'm going to do a little bit of work on the hill again not a huge amount but this part of the hill it's very porous and it will suck in quite a lot of polish so that's another area that you don't want to neglect and you can see I'm not going on and on I'm just applying it a little bit and then I'm leaving it alone like that that's it that's all I want then once I've done one application on the sides and in the hill I'm also going to do the same up in the back of the head and in the shoulders here where the head need, meets the neck because this is also very porous here and it will suck in quite a bit of polish so again I want to start building it up there this is completely clean so I don't need to clean it up again but I'm just going to put a little bit more polish because I can feel it that even though I don't want too much because this is quite small I feel that I can put a little bit so the same I'm going to apply on the head the top as well you want to make sure that you don't neglect these little areas there these are the little details that will make the difference between a fantastic looking guitar and a guitar that is just polished but when you look in detail it's not amazing so I also going to put a little bit in here like before I don't want to um, overdo it I just want to put a little bit and I'd rather put thin coats and small amounts at the time but more often because what that means is that when it's very thin it dries a lot quicker and then you can go and go back to work into it but if you apply too much not only is going to take longer to dry but also it's just not going to work very well so now I can go into the back and again I'm going to load my rubber again and I'm going to 
just work with this. I'm not going to put any alcohol into it yet. We'll do that a little bit later on. And um, I'm going to do like with the soundboard. I'm going to land in like an aeroplane, but I want to be careful that I don't bring red into the white because even though this has been sealed already, it could happen. So I'm going to start working on the line like that. And I'm going to check and you can see it's good. I'm going to do that and I've got a little bit of red. So I'm just going to go and clean this like that. And then I'm going to apply a little bit more polish. There you are. And then I'm going to do this side. And look, I've got a lot more here. So now I need to clean this up a bit more again. And now I'm going to do the rest of the pack without going over the edges too much. I'm going to try to avoid those. Following the grain. And I'm picking up more pigments here. And the same in this side. And look at that, awful. So what this means is that we are going to have to be cleaning this um, quite carefully to make sure that we don't bring this anywhere into the guitar. Um, I've got a little bit left, but this is not going to come out. So I'm happy to leave it like that. It's reasonably clean and then again I can shape this up again. So now I've got one very thin layer everywhere and what I would do is that I would work in the same way but applying a little bit more before I just leave it to rest. Not a huge amount more to be honest. Uh, what I've done so far I probably could do the same four or five times and, and I leave it like that. Um, but we still have the neck which the main shaft which is what we've been using as a handle for the guitar we also need to apply some polish here so like everywhere else my rubber is now clean and what i'm going to do is to pick it up from the inside of the slots and i can apply polish into the neck You can see that I wanted to, to stop, so what it means is that I'm just going to leave it like that. So now when you finish with your rubber, uh, because now I'm done, I'm going to leave this for uh, half an hour easily to make sure that everything is dry really well. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do all those codes that I was telling you. And that, you know, a session like this, it, it should take you, you know, about half an hour, not much more than that. Um, but when you uh, don't have the rubber in your hand, you always have to make sure that it's not left on the bench. You have to have a good um, pot where to keep it in to make sure that it doesn't dry up. So that's there now. Um, actually, before I finish, um, this video I'm going to show you as well that we also need to polish the bridge at the same time that we're doing all of this. So what I've done with the bridge so far is to stick it with a couple of little dots of super glue into a block so that I can hold it and I didn't fill the grain with epoxy resin because what will happen is that the resin will go into the slot and into the holes and it will make a mess and it will be really hard to clean those areas. So the way that I fill the grain with this is actually just with the polish itself. Again, some people might not like this idea, but this is the way I do it. So what I do is that I get my brush and I 
apply three or four thick coats of French polish into here. And I start polishing this um, element, the bridge, way in advance. I started with this probably a couple of weeks ago. And what I do is that I wait for that to dry 100%. And when it's quite hard, I go and sand it all up 100%. So that I only leave those little bits of uh, polish into the grain. And then I do the same process four or five times. And, you know, it only takes two or three days for this to dry really hard. So, you know, in a couple of weeks, you get quite a lot of the, of the grain completely filled. And now I have um, a little bit of polish that is left from the last coat of um, that I've done with the brush. So what I'm going to be do doing in here is that I will, I will cut it back. I'm going to put this lid back in here for a moment. And with 400 sandpaper and a little block, now I'm going to clean this up completely. But this last coat I've got here, it's a lot thinner than the previous ones that I did when I was filling the grain. And you can see that there, there might be a tiny bit of grain in here. I can see a couple of little dots there, but it's very good already. So by the time I f finish with the polishing, there will be no grain into that. And doing it this way, what will happen is that in time, you might get a little bit of grain opening up, which it will be very small and it won't show much really. So I find that this is a good way to do the bridge. Okay, so you'll do this all over the bridge like that. And then we are gonna clean it up and make sure that all of this dust is gone. Again, we have a tiny bit of dust because it's French polish. It will melt with what we have in the rubber. So you'll do the whole bridge like that. And then again, with the content of what's left in here, I'm not going to apply any, I'm not going to put in any polish now. Again, I want to make sure that I have a good point. So I'm going to reinstate this over there and get a nice little edge and then I'm just going to put a little bit of polish in there. That's it. That's, my, that's, that's it. as much as that. Not, not really. It's quite little. So again, you have to remember that you need to be polishing the bridge at the same time that the whole guitar has been done. And the bridge is also one of those elements that tend to be a little neglected. So you want to make sure that you don't forget about it. So in the same way that I've sanded back all the polish in this wing, I will do that all over the bridge. And then that's as much polish you put each time, very little. But very little many times, it means that later on you'll have a really good, um, nice looking bridge. So. We're going to leave it there. I hope you found this helpful. And in the next video, you will see what the guitar will look like before we start applying a little bit of foil and also a little bit of alcohol with the, with the mix. And um, so, yes, until the next video and see you soon.